Hello, I'm Jim Muncy with Project Tech. This presentation will provide you with an overall feel for how the spare parts management functionality ties in with the work order parts reservation process. The goal of good spare parts management is to have the critical spare parts on hand at the right place and right time when needed. This is not designed as a training presentation, but merely as a functional overview. We will begin this presentation by taking a look at the Asset Spare Parts tab. The Asset Spare Parts tab is where you would list sub-assemblies, such as any child assets that belong to this major asset, and also in the lower section you have your critical spare parts list. The critical spare parts list must be set up by the end user. Now we'll take a look at some features available to you from the spare parts list. I'm going to select the item 20778, which is the housing for the centrifugal pump. The arrow to the right is what has my options in it. So I click the detail menu button. We'll take a look at some of these options. Uh, the go to allows me to hyperlink directly to either the item master or the inventory record to see more detailed information on this item. I'm going to click on the inventory button to hyperlink to the inventory application. The inventory application allows me to see more information on this item. And if the item exists in more than one storeroom, you must select the storeroom. I'll select the one from the central storeroom. This allows you to see all detailed information about the item. What's very important as far as spare parts goes is the Where Use tab. The Where Use tab is basically the inverse of the Asset Spare Parts tab. If you have an item listed on the Asset Spare Parts tab, it's automatically captured onto the Where Use tab for that specific item and tells you what asset it belongs to. Likewise, if you add a, a asset to the item on the Where Use tab, it automatically populates the Asset Spare Parts tab. And we'll look at a few other options. Clicking the Detail button again. I go down to below and click on the View Image. This allows me to see the picture I have of the item that's attached to the Item Master record. And the last option I want to talk about, View Item Availability. This View Item Availability dialog box contains a, a lot of information. The Locations tab lists every storeroom that handles this item and it tells you what the current balance is, how many are reserved currently, and how many are available to be issued out. The All Lots tab contains not only the storeroom the item is located within, but also the bin number it's located in. The Purchasing tab lists for you all current POs, purchase requisitions, and contracts for that item. In this example, we have one PO, number 1066, ordered for the central storeroom. It's in the approved status. I've ordered two and received none so far. Alternate items. This tab will list for you any substitute items that can be substituted for your original item. And last tab is reservations. This will list for you any work orders that currently have this item reserved for it. Now I've begun a work order, a corrective maintenance work order. It's currently in the waiting for approval status. And I'm going to begin to plan this work order out. And first thing I'm going to do is list my parts I need. So I'll click on the Plants tab and go down to the Material Sub tab. And to select my spare parts for this work order, I'm going to click on the Select Asset Spare Parts button. This pulls up my, spe my spare parts list for my asset record. I'm going to select my Centrifugal Pump Housing again. Check the box. Click OK. When I add the item to the work order, it defaults to quantity of 1, which I can always update to a higher quantity. I can either reserve this item in the storeroom, or I can check direct issue and buy this via a PR and PO directly for the work order. We will talk about direct issue in a later video. Right now, to reserve this, I'll just enter my storeroom in the storeroom field. Once you enter your storeroom value, other information from the inventory record will automatically populate, such as the stock category and the unit cost. Now is a good time to save this work order. So I'll click the Save button. And to actually place a reservation, you must approve the, per the work order. So I'm going to click on the Approve Work Order button. Click OK. Now the work order is approved, and my part should be automatically reserved for me in the storeroom. To double check that, 
We know that the arrow to the right of my item field contains all my options. I'll click on the arrow, click View Item Availability, and if I look at my quantity now for the central storeroom, I still have a current balance of one, but now I have one reserved and a quantity available of zero. Click on my res my reservations tab. It shows me that I have a request 1620 for work order 1179, which is my work order, and it's reserved for, for me in the central storeroom, ready to be picked up. That's the reservation process. Please visit us at www.projecttech.com to see our other training videos. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.